Welcome back. In this session, we want to focus on an optimization technique called union pruning. Based on the setting of union pruning, some data sources of a union can be excluded early from processing. This can reduce data, uh, can reduce resources consumption and also lead to faster queries. The general idea is that you as a modeler put additional knowledge about the data into this um, union and by that you help the optimizer to find an easy way to avoid evaluating a lot of data sources of this union. That means in consequence use union pruning to speed up your queries, to re um, reduce the amount of consumed resources, but what you should also be aware is that if you have wrong settings then you can also um, lead it can also lead to unexpected values and this is also what I will discuss in this session to show you how things can also go wrong if you put the wrong information in it. Union pruning has at the moment three techniques to offer. One is explicit pruning, the other one is implicit pruning and the column-based pruning. In explicit pruning, you map a constant value to the respective data sources. You say, for example, this data source of the union is of, of a certain year, like 2020, and this data source is from year 2022. Now, if, you have, if a query comes and you have already this information entered in this union, then if you filter for a certain year, the optimizer knows exactly which data source provides the, the um, relevant data and the rest can be ignored. This is in a kind similar to what you can do with partition pruning, but in partition pruning you are much less flexible because in partition pruning you rely on that your filter matches to the partition criteria. Here you are free to define what criteria you want to have for a certain data source. Implicit pruning is pretty similar to explicit pruning but here you use a configuration table and this configuration table defines then um, based on how the filter looks like that comes with the query um, which sources are relevant then. And then column based pruning here you uh, define certain columns of being of interest and if a data source does not provide a value for this column then this data source is pruned away. Let's have a look in more details into it. Here on the left side you see explicit pruning example, on the right side the implicit pruning. The idea is that you have here a union with two data sources and on the left side in the explicit pruning you tag one data source as old, the other one as new. Now if a query comes in and filters for, the, um, for old, then the new data is pruned very early and not evaluated anymore. This is now here rather a toy example, but assume that you have a lot of data sources and you have stacked data sources, which means this is another calculation view, stacked on another calculation view, and so on. In that scenario then, it can be very beneficial if, based on the knowledge about the data, this can be excluded at runtime very early and does not need to be evaluated or processed. I mean, just from a data perspective, if you did not put the information in that here's only, let's say, new data from a query, um, if, you, if the same would be, need to be achieved um, from the optimizer, the optimizer would first need to filter the data and see whether any, any data of it is old or new. And by just tagging it with your semantic knowledge and saying there is no, new, no old data in it, you, you avoid that this has to be done and evaluated at runtime. On the right side, the implicit pruning, you see here also an example, and here you define for a certain node um, what, what value are uh, included here um, for a certain column. So if you now have here a where clause and you compare a certain column here to a certain date, then you can look up in the uh, configuration table which data source is relevant for it and only this data source then needs to be evaluated. Now, similar to the analytic privileges, if you remember that, with the procedure, you add an additional dependency here, a table, if you use the implicit pruning. And therefore, 
the recommendation is again to use the explicit pruning and avoid this additional dependency if possible. However, this explicit pruning is less flexible than what you can achieve with this implicit pruning where you can define for example smaller than or equal and so on for values. So, if possible, use explicit pruning. If you need more flexibility, you can also use, of course, implicit pruning. And of course, this is better than using no pruning at all. Here are some specific modeling recommendations that are good to know about if you use union pruning. First of all, there are certain nodes that are, do not allow to pass filters. Let's take as an example a ranking node. If you think about it, if you rank and you want to find the three top customers, it's the difference whether you first filter for a country or you take the um, top three customers and then filter for the country. Let's take an example. If you filter for Germany and take the top three customers, then you will certainly have three customers from Germany in it. However, if you filter the top customers first, it might be from totally different countries and you have then three customers from let's say US and if you now filter for Germany you will not get any results from it. And this means now that whether the filter is executed before the rank or after ranking um, changes the data and because of that the, the filter is not pushed down. This was now one example that explains why sometimes filters are not per default pushed down. But in this case for union pruning it also means if you filter for um, for a column that's needed for deciding, deciding about the union pruning, then if the filter is not pushed down, then the union pruning does not occur. How can you make that now still occur? One option is that you use input parameters in your, uh, for, for doing the filtering of the union pruning. Input parameters are evaluated at the stage where they are defined in a model or used in a model. So you can, by that, um, make sure that also at the union node, a filter is arriving using the input parameter. Another option is for the rank node, for example, there is an option to select allow filter pushdown. And if you select that explicitly, it means that you understand the semantics of it and you want that the filters are executed before the ranking takes place. And if you select that, then again, union pruning can take place if the union is defined below the ranking node. Therefore, if you want to use union pruning, make sure that if some blockers are above it, that you either use an input parameter to pass the value, or you make sure that the blockers are removed by ha having something like, for example, a pushdown flag. If you filter on a col um, column based on a pruning column based on a secret script variable, then the option bind as value can be helpful. For more details, please have a look at the linked information here. Now, from the, from the information before, I already said that explicit pruning should be preferred. There's also, independent of the additional dependency to a table, an additional advantage of implicit pruning, um, uh, of explicit pruning. Implicit pruning requires that a few is um, not unfolded or that an aggregation is requested at least. You don't ha have always um, control of, over on unfolding. I mean, we will talk about unfolding in uh, week four in more details, but just for now, you have not always control over whether unfolding occurs or not. And therefore, it's safer then to go the, the route and use um, aggregation and make sure that aggregation is there. But also there, again, there's a difference. You need an aggregation if it's not, um, if it's unfolded to make use of um, implicit pruning. This, this requirement you don't have with explicit pruning. So again, there's an um, advantage of using a, a explicit pruning. Here's another modeling technique. Let's assume you you want to use um, a filter um, based on another table that you join. So here you join a table to, to, um, to a union and you filter here for a certain value and you expect that this value then um, triggers the union pruning. This is not happening because no 
explicit filter is defined here. That's an implicit filter that's evaluated later than the union pruning decision is done. If you want to achieve such a scenario, then you can do that by using an input parameter that is derived from a function. So you can derive the value that you want to filter. You can also have input um, user prompts in it. And then you derive the value that you want to filter and then use the input parameter in the union directly. This is now pretty complex. So I, I would suggest that if you're interested in this technique, have a look at this example here where it's documented. Now, the last pruning type, union pruning type that I want um, to discuss here um, is column-based pruning. Here, the idea is that you have certain columns in which you are interested to analyze. Let's say you are only interested in analyzing a certain measure. That also means if a data source is not contributing to this measure, then you don't need to evaluate this data source. And this is exactly what you can specify with column pruning. So you switch on column pruning and then you select which focus columns you are interested in and only data sources that contribute to these focus columns are then considered. So you see here that um, the column sales is not mapped from the second data source but only from the first one, which means if I, I now, now um, do a, a select statement on, on this calculation view, then based on that sales is a focus column, but not delivered from the second data source, the second data source can be excluded from processing pretty early. Therefore, if you are interested in a certain column for analysis, like a measure, then use uh, column-based pruning to make sure that you can exclude irrelevant data sources as early as possible. Now, here are some examples where where it can go wrong if you use union pruning and you don't match your information that you put into to the union pruning to the real data. Let's assume you have a data source, one contributing old data and one new data. That's what you tell from the union pruning. But in reality, in the new data, you have also old data. This is something that will not be detected then at execution time, but at execution time, it's assumed that whatever you define here is the correct information. So if the data is not reflecting what you are putting here, then the data that comes out would be not what you expect there. It is also important that if you define here that something is delivering a certain uh, type of data, that this is al also holds for the systems in which you transport the calculation view. Perhaps in another system, there's a, 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 there are different data in the different data sources, or it might also be that you load additional data and by this you violate what you put as a semantic knowledge into the model. So please make sure that if you put here pruning information in it, that the pruning information reflects how the data looks like. For column-based pruning, there's a similar situation or less that... Um, that you put wrong information in it in the data modeling, but um, column pruning switched on or off differs in the results or can differ in the results. And this is exactly what's the purpose of the column-based pruning, but you should be aware of it at least. If you look here on the left side where column-based pruning is switched off, then also data sources that contribute nothing to the focus column are retrieving values, which means I see here records that are for A and B attributes that don't contribute to focus column. That's just null, but I see them. If I switch now column-based pruning on, per definition of the column-based pruning, I'm not interested in these data, which means I don't want to see these records and I don't see any records here because nothing contributes to the focus column here, which means there's a difference whether you switch column-based pruning on or off. And this is intended by the mechanism of column-based pruning, but you should be aware of it and make it and use it only if, you are, if this is what you want to achieve. If you're not interested in the values of attributes that are not contributing to the focus column, then you can switch it on. I hope this shed uh, some light on the concepts of union-based pruning or union pruning in general, which hopefully helps you to achieve better performance with your models. Thanks.